So, um, if you guys remember, one of those uh, examples, the last example I believe I talked about, I talked about multiplying everything by the LC, LCD, least common denominator. Um, and what that did is that eliminated all of our denominators. It, we still had a fraction, but we eliminated denominators. And I went back, let's go back to this equation. Let's say I have 1 fourth x um, plus 2 thirds equals 1 sixth, right? So ladies and gentlemen, we talked about this. Back in algebra 1, we, we introduced, once we learned how to solve equations, we started also talking about what happens when you have an equation though with all fractions. You can still do the same steps. Subtract 2 thirds from 1 sixth, then divide by 1 fourth on both sides. There's nothing wrong with that. However, a lot of us still don't like doing fractions because we look at our split ends and we try to tear them off. So rather than even trying to worry about fractions, we said, well, you know, one thing we can do is we can determine what the LCM is. That is the least common multiple of all of our denominators. And the least common multiple for all of our denominators in this case is 12, because that's the smallest number that all three of my denominators divide into. And then once I know what that value is, if I multiply everything by 12, I am, one, going to keep an equivalent equation, meaning I'm not changing the problem. But what I'm doing is I'm changing how the problem is represented. Because now, 12 divided by 4 gives me 3x. 2 times, 24, three, two times 12 is 24 divided by 3 is going to give me 8 equals 12 divided by 6 equals 2. Now I have an equation that's pretty simple to solve, right? It's much easier than subtracting and adding fractions, yes? And multiplying and dividing fractions, yes? OK. So guess what? That's exactly what we're going to want to do here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. And once we see all these fractions we want to add, automatically, ladies and gentlemen, I like to just write out what is my LCM. So I have x plus 3, 6, and 16. <sighs> I'm sorry. I did write it wrong. What? I'm sorry, guys. Wrong problem. I already did this problem. My apologies. Let's do uh, 2 over x plus 3. I knew I 2 over x plus 3 plus 3 halves equals 19 over 10. OK, same thing is going to apply. But sorry about that. We're just going to use a different example. Well, yes, because the other problem I actually already recorded for you. So if you want to see what that other problem is, you can go back and already record it. So I didn't want to make two different recordings for this one. Um, so now we're going to do the exact same thing. So we look at this and we say, let's first look at the numbers. We have 10, 2, and x plus 3. So out of the numbers, what is the smallest number that both 10 and 2 divide into? 20 they both divide into. But what is the smallest number that they both divide into? 10. So it, you could use 20. There's nothing wrong with it. But you're going to have to simplify your answer. So it's best to try to simplify it at the beginning by using your least common multiple. And then we also have to include the x plus 3, right? So its least common multiple is going to be 10 and x plus 3. All right? So now what we're going to do in this case, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to multiply every single term by a least common multiple, right? We can't just multiply the last term and then this term, right? We have to multiply every single term by our least common multiple to produce equivalent equations. So let's see what happens. 10 times x plus 3. 10 times x plus 3, and 10 times x plus 3. So now let's go, what happens when we multiply each one of these? Well, here, my x plus 3's are going to divide into 1. So I'm just left with 2 times 10, which is 20. Here, 3 times 10 is 30, divided by 2 is 15, times x plus 3 equals here, my 10s divide to 1, and I'm left with 19 times x plus 3. Does everybody see exactly what I did for those steps? How they divided to 1? What's your question? Where did you, I lose you at? OK. So let's go back through this. If I'm multiplying 2 over x plus 3 times 10 times x plus 3, right? Remember how we multiplied whole numbers? We can change that to a fraction. So now we're multiplying these across, which would be 20 times x plus 3 over x plus 3. Do you notice how x plus 3 divided to equal 1? Because they're the same thing, right? So it just equals 20. If I, re if I did that for each one of these problems, for each one of those values, you'll see what I get. Here, 
3 times 10 is 30, and then divide by 2 is 15. So now it's 15 times x plus 3. Here, the tens just divide out. So I'm just left with 19 times x plus 3. Okay? The best thing, if you're having trouble with it, just write it all out like I did over here. If you're not seeing how to get those problems, just write it out. You're multiplying 2 times x plus 3 times the LCM. And then what you notice is the x plus 3 is divide to 1. All right, so now we need to apply reputative property or distributive property. So now I distribute. So I get 20 plus 15x plus 45 equals 19x. And that's going to be 38. So it's going to be 57. OK. Now we have x's on both sides, right? So now we need to get the x's to the same side, right? Because this is a linear equation. So we need to get the x's to the same side. So I always like to get the x's um, to the side where they'll be positive. So therefore, I have 20 plus 45 is going to be 65 equals 4x plus 57. Now I subtract 57 on both sides. And then I get uh, 8 equals 4x. Divide by 4, x equals 2. Any questions on that? No? Happy, fun, good, lucky, go, great, okay. Good stuff. Good talk.